ओम भूर्भुवस्वितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो दिवीमो नचोदयात ओम शांति 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 दिस इज वीडियो नंबर फोर्टी वन ऑन टॉक्स विद राम नाम हरिषि दिस वीडियो स्टार्ट्स विद टॉक नंबर फाइव हंड्रेड एटीन ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ सेप्टेम्बर नाइनटीन थर्टी एट टॉक नंबर फाइव हंड्रेड फाइव हंड्रेड एटीन मिस्टर वी गुप्ता ए तेलुगु पंडित इज ऑन ए विजिट हियर श्री भगवान सेड इन द कोर्स ऑफ कॉन्वर्सेशन आत्मकृति द ईगो इज नॉट द सेम एज अहम द लेटर इज द सुप्रीम रियलिटी वेयर एज द फॉर्मर इज द ईगो इट इज टू बी ओवरकम बिफोर द ट्रूथ इज रियलाइज the supreme being is unmanifest and the first sign of manifestation is ahan sapurna light of i the brahmadarnayaka upanishad says ahan nama abhavat he became i named that is the original name of the reality the pandit asked about the operation of grace is it the mind of the guru acting on the mind of the disciple or anything different maharishi replied the highest form of grace is silence mona it is also the highest upadesha devotee vivekananda has also said that silence is the loudest form of prayer mercy it is so for the seeker the silence guru's silence is the loudest upadesha it is also grace in its highest form all other dikshas initiations for example sparsha chakshus are derived from mona silence they are therefore secondary mona is the primary form if the guru is silent the seeker's mind gets purified by itself devotee puts a question is it proper that one prays to god or guru when one is afflicted by worldly ills maharishi undoubtedly talk number 519 maharishi continues the mahavakyas and their interpretation lead to interminable discussions and keep the minds of the seekers engaged externally to turn the mind inward the man must directly settle down in the i then there is an end of external activities and perfect peace prevails later a passage from the yoga vasistha was read out before sri bhagwan indicating initiation by look and initiation by touch Sri Bhagwan observed Dakshana Murti observed silence when the disciples approached him that is the highest form of initiation it includes the other forms 
there must be subject object relationship established in the other dikshas first the subject must emanate and then the object unless these two are there how is the one to look at the other or touch him mona diksha is the most perfect it comprises looking touching and teaching it will purify the individual in every way and establish him in the reality talk number 520 an australian gentleman mr roman is on a visit here he seems to be studying the hindu system of philosophy he started saying that he believed in unity the jiva is yet in illusion and so on maharshi replies what is the unity you believe in how can the jiva find a place in it devoti the unity is the absolute maharshi reply the jiva cannot find a place in unity devoti but the jiva has not realized the absolute and imagines itself separate maharshi jiva is separate because it must exist in order to imagine something devoti but it is unreal mercy any unreal thing cannot produce effects it is like saying that you killed some animal with the horn of a hare a hare does not grow horns devoti i see the absurdity but i speak from the physical plane mercy you say i who is that i if that is found you can later say whose is the illusion a little later sri bhagwan asked you say you are in the physical plane now in which plane are you in dreamless sleep devotee i think in the physical plane again maharishi you say i think that means that you are saying it now when you are awake anyway you admit that you exist in deep sleep don't you devotee yes but i did not function then mercy so then you existed in deep sleep you are the same one who continues to exist are you not devotee yes mercy with this difference that you did not function in your sleep rather you are associated with the thinking faculty in your waking state and you are disassociated from it in sleep is it not so devotee yes maharshi which is then your real nature is it to be associated with thinking or to be disassociated devotee i see it now but i was not aware of my being in sleep mercy you say now you say so now you do not say so in your sleep or do you deny your being very existence in sleep devotee no mercy it amounts to this that you exist in both states the absolute existence is the self you are also conscious of the existence that existence is also consciousness sat and chit that is your real nature devotee but thinking is necessary even for realization mercy that thinking is aimed at the elimination of all thinking devotee owing to owing to my ignorance i do not realize the absolute existence consciousness mercy who is the i whose is the ignorance answer to these questions will alone suffice to prove that you are already realized 
is there anyone who denies his own existence or can anyone say that he did not exist in his sleep pure existence is thus admitted the admission also implies consciousness thus all men are realized there is no ignorant man at all devotee yes i understand but i have a small question to ask the state of realization is one of desirelessness if a human being is desireless he ceases to be human mercy you admit your existence in sleep you did not function then you were not aware of any gross body you did not limit yourself to this body so you could not find anything separate from yourself now in your waking state you continue to be the same existence with the limitations of the body added these limitations make you see other objects hence arises desire but the state of desirelessness in sleep made you no less happy than now you did not feel any want you did not make yourself miserable by not entertaining desire but now you entertain desires because you are limited to this human frame why do you wish to retain these limitations and continue to entertain desires sri bhagwan continued does the body tell you that it is there it is certainly something apart from the body that remains aware what is it do you say that it is the i meaning the ego which arises simultaneously with the waking of the individual from sleep be it so the body is not sentient the absolute does not speak the ego does one does not aspire for liberation in sleep the aspiration arises only in the waking state the functions of the waking state are those of the ego which is synonymous with the i find out who this i is on doing so and abiding as i all these doubts will be cleared up 28th september 1938 Talk number 521. Some congressmen handed over the following questions to Maharishi. Number one: How long is India destined to suffer bondage? Number two: Have not the sons of India made enough sacrifice for her liberation? Three: Will India get freedom during Mahatma Gandhi's lifetime? the above questions were not answered categorically sri bhagwan simply remarked gandhi ji has surrendered himself to the divine and works accordingly with no self interest he does not concern himself with the results but accepts them as they turn up that must be the attitude of national workers question will the work be crowned with success maharishi this question arises because the questioner has not surrendered himself question should we not then think of and work for the welfare of the country maharishi first take care of yourself and the rest will naturally follow question i am not speaking individually but for the country Mercy first surrender and see the doubts arise because of the absence of surrender acquire strength by surrender and then your surroundings will be found to have improved to the degree of strength acquired acquired by you 
question should we not know if our actions will be worthwhile mercy follow the example of gandhi ji in the work for the national cause surrender is the word the following slip was also handed over to sri bhagwan four of us have come from the kurg and we had gone to delhi to wait as a deputation on the working committee of the indian national congress and we are now going back we are sent from the kurg congress committee and so kindly give us some message to the kurg district congress committee and the people of kurg in general when this slip was handed over sri bhagwan said that the same answer holds good here too the message is contained in the word surrender 29th september 1938 talk number 522 A visitor asked Sri Bhagwan, "I want to knowledge. I want knowledge, Maharishi. Who wants knowledge? Devotee, I want it, Maharishi. Who is that? I find the I and see later what further knowledge is required." Second October 1938, talk number 523. A pilgrim's special train brought several visitors from Bengal. One of them said that he had read Mr. Paul Brunton's book, and since then he was anxious to see see Sri Bhagwan. He also asked, "How shall I overcome my passions?" Maharshi replies. Find the route, and then it will be easy. Later. what are the passions kama lust krodha anger etc why do they arise because of likes and dislikes towards the objects seen how do the objects project themselves in your view because of your avidya that is ignorance ignorance of what of the self thus if you find the self and abide therein there will be no trouble owing to the passions later again what is the cause of the passions desire to be happy or enjoy pleasure why does the desire for happiness arise because your nature is happiness itself and it is natural that you come into your own this happiness is not found anywhere besides the self do not look for it elsewhere but seek the self and abide therein still again that happiness which is natural is simply rediscovered so it cannot be lost whereas the happiness arising from other objects are external and thus liable to be lost therefore it cannot be permanent and so it is not worth seeking moreover craving for pleasures should not be encouraged one cannot put out burning fire by pouring petrol over it an attempt to satisfy your craving for the time being so that the passion may later be suppressed is simply foolish there are no doubt other methods for the expression of passion they are number 1 regulated food number 2 fasting number 3 yoga practice number 4 medicines but their effects are transitory the passions reappear with greater force as soon as the check is removed the only way to overcome them is to eradicate them that's all done by finding their source as stated above
talk number 524 another pilgrim asked i am a man with a family is it possible for those in a family to get release and if so how mercy now what is family whose family is it if the answers to these questions are found the other questions solve themselves tell me are you in the family or is the family in you the visitor did not answer then sri bhagwan's answers was continued who are you you include three aspects of life namely the waking the dream and the sleep states you are not aware of the family and their ties in your sleep and so these questions did not arise then but now you are aware of the family and their ties and therefore you seek release but you are the same person throughout devoti because i now feel that i am in the family it is right that i should seek release maharishi you are right but consider and say are you in the family or is the family in you another visitor interposed what is family mercy that's it it must be known devoti there is my wife and there are also my children they are dependent on me that is the family mercy do the members of the family bind your mind or do you bind yourself to them do they come and say to you we form your family be with us or do you consider them as your family and that you are bound to them devotee i consider them as my family and feel bound to them maharishi quite so because you think that so and so is your wife and so and so are your children you also think that you are bound to them these thoughts are yours they owe their very existence to you you can entertain the these thoughts or relinq relinquish them the former is bondage and the latter is a release devotee it is not quite clear to me maharishi you must exist in order that you may think you may think these thoughts or other thoughts the thoughts change but not you let go the passing thoughts and hold on to the unchanging self the thoughts form your bondages if they are given up there is a release the bondage is not external so no external remedy need be sought for release it is within you competence to think and thus to get bound or cease thinking and thus be free devotee but it is not easy to remain without thinking mercy you need not cease thinking only think of the root of the thoughts seek it and find it the self shines by itself when that is found the thoughts cease of their own accord that is freedom from bondages devotee yes i understand it now i have learnt it now is a guru necessary maharishi so long as you consider yourself as an individual a guru is necessary to show to you that you are not bound by limitations and that your nature is to be free from limitations so this video is completed and next video will start with the talk number 525 thanks a lot for watching this video please like comment and share the video and subscribe the channel namaskar